Hey Harmonizers! We are going to go change Secret's bandage for her hoof. I'll show you guys what happened. She ended up having some wood pulled out of her hoof, which was super crazy. Ended up having to go to the Guelph Emergency Clinic and get some wood pulled out. I have no idea how she did it to herself. And we're super grateful for these new stalls that we just had put in this year where she can be in and stick her head out and still enjoy what's going on because our other barn had stalls in it, but there's no window. So this is so much nicer that she can stick her little head out. I'll show you guys around the corner our, the rest of the barn extension there. So we're so excited that we've got these stalls that just make it a lot nicer for being inside for the stall rest. She can't be outside right now. Um, she's not lame. She could be out in that sense, but because of where the injury is on the bottom of her hoof, you can kind of see outside right now it's very wet. It's actually warmed up to slightly above freezing, which is not good for secret because it means that with the injury right on her hoof, she could be at risk for getting lots of moisture, runny water, all sorts of things into her hoof, which would be not good. So if it freezes up and we get some snow again, she can actually go out because it would be able to keep her hoof quite clean. But out here like this, it's gonna be really hard because you're gonna have water that runs around with poo and pee and that could get into her hoof and be all sorts of infections. So safer to just keep her inside where she is dry and not getting anything into her hoof. So let's go change that dressing and I'll give you guys a few tips along the way. So the first thing I've done here is I've got Secret tied in her stall using a quick release knot. I think it's best to try to change bandages where horses feel the most comfortable and relaxed. So in her stall is a great place to do that. And then I've got all of her stuff ready, nice and close by, and I try to have it ready so it's accessible. I've got my scissors to cut the bandage, the betadine solution for disinfecting, the gauze wrap, um, gauze, the duct tape last on the bottom, and notice how the bandages are all sitting off of the hay. They're actually sitting on the duct tape to keep them all clean and ready to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut this off. This is what the hoof looked like after she came out of surgery when she went to Guelph. The red part you see is where they cut to allow it to drain. The circled area is actually where the wood went in and they were able to pull it straight out. Somehow it missed every important hoof structure and this is actually what the wood looked like. It was actually a couple inches long, so she was extremely lucky. And I want to be aware of the fact that the injury site is right around the heel, so I want to cut kind of staying away from that area because I don't want to create pressure and I don't want her to feel like she has to get defensive. So if I were to cut down here, we would expect her to have um, a bit of a reaction because she might be sore. So I want to cut more away from where that is. So I'm going to try to cut down and angle my scissors going away from the area that's affected. Now this is quite a few days after surgery now, so it should be looking pretty nice. She's very used to having this done at this point. And she was a superstar at the clinic, and I have no idea how she did it, but somehow she managed to get wood literally impaled into her hoof. And we got really lucky that it avoided all of the important hoof structures. There's lots of bones in there, and she managed to kind of avoid them all. And it really is just kind of like a massive abscess at this point. Everything pulled out just fine, but it's right on the bottom of her hoof. So it's really prone to infection. And the main thing about this bandage wrapping is I want to keep it clean, protected, disinfected. You can see um, she was shaved here at the clinic. So the hair is just starting to grow back in. Luckily, it's not too cold, which has been good. So now before I pick up her foot, and take that off. I wanna get my next part ready, so I'm gonna open up my gauze wrap here, make sure my gauze is all ready. Get my betadine sitting at the ready. Okay, so then now when I lift up this hoof, ask gently, now I don't want it to touch the ground. So ideally I wanna keep this lifted up and not touch the ground until I get it wrapped up. So we're gonna try really hard 
to keep this up the whole time. Good, so it's looking really good here. So we're gonna get the betadine solution. Basically just squirt that right in there. Now we're gonna get our little gauze. We're gonna stuff it in and kind of fill the holes. We still want it to be able to drain. We're just trying to protect it, keep it really clean. So we're covering the area. Okay, I'm gonna try to hold that with my one hand. Now I've got the gauze wrap and I'm gonna wrap. It's definitely awkward to do, but I'm holding the hoof up and we're mostly just trying to secure this all in position. So I'm crisscrossing over the heel, coming around. Trying to hold her up at the same time, coming around the toe and making sure that we keep everything really clean. Move that out of the way there. Now I'm gonna grab my vet wrap. It still doesn't have a seal on it, so I don't wanna let it touch the ground until I have the vet wrap done on it. So I'm gonna do kind of the same thing here where I'm going to have my vet wrap come around. And because I'm just doing around the hoof area, it doesn't, I'm not really worried about pulling the tendon to the inside. Where that's going there. I just need to keep this bandage secure. This is gonna be what it's all about, is. I'm gonna bring the foot forward. Switch my hand placement around. I go just over the the fetlock joint there, just for the little bit of support to hold the bandage on. We're gonna make sure we get the toe covered here. And I'm just crisscrossing around that heel, just trying to get the whole area covered without pulling snug on the bandage because I don't want to be um, creating any type of tension. We want it just tight enough that it's holding on. Don't want the hoof to be stuck. And now I can rest it on the ground while I get the next part ready and kind of move some of the stuff out of the way but we didn't want her to step down until we had that. Now I've got the bandage tape that I'm gonna put on next. So we'll put that on next. Again, we don't wanna pull tension. This one's right at the end. So I've got another roll here that we'll use. We don't want to cause another set of problems by having done the bandage too tight. Okay. And so then the last part we want to do is waterproof it using the duct tape. So what I'm going to do is get some pieces ready that I can just kind of reach for. And I'm going to move you over. Move over, honey. So I just moved her over a bit so I can use my gate over here. I'm going to put my tape on. Just getting a whole bunch of pieces ready. So I'm ripping them off one by one. And we want to do pieces rather than wrapping because. We still want the hoof to be able to expand. We don't want to trap any swelling 
if you constrict a part of the horse's body too much, you can end up with a lot more problems. So by doing strips of tape, it's gonna help make sure that um, there's no continuous circle and trapping anything in there. Okay. And this is gonna act as a waterproof layer and also kind of just hold the bandage together. So I'm gonna start with one piece in my hand, put my tape down. We're gonna pick up our hoof. We're gonna brush the shavings off that have fallen on. And now we're going to tape the toe. I'm gonna to use my pieces that I have And I'm just layering it on, taping around, waterproofing, getting that toe covered, covering the whole bottom of the horse's foot. I'll show you guys a different view after I'm done. Without wrapping around the whole hoof because we don't want to cause any extra inflammation going around the horse's toe especially because that's where they tend to rip the bandage is at the toe so you want that to be really solid good girl so this is a close-up of the bandage here i'm going to pick up her foot so you can see it and you can see the bottom is not it's all been wrapped in pieces but that toe is completely protected.